Hi everyone, Michael from Yana. We're back with another episode. Uh, this is Craig. Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, it's a really shitty topic. This isn't it. Postmodernism is the topic. This is we just went over it for about ten minutes, and I realised that I can't really. <laughs> ironically, I can't get to the truth with postmodernism, yeah. which <laughs> seems to be some sort of truth. But anyway, we're going to try and discuss it, and it's wow. all right to, as we were saying in our last video, to take the blinkers off and explore all sorts of things and not get stuck down narrow ideologies because we're not prepared to at least discuss a topic, even if we can't get to the end of it. But yeah. I've got an opinion on ideology. Let me yeah. give it to you, and then you critique it. Righto. Sorry, I've got but, an opinion but, on postmodernism. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, postmodernism. <laughs> you can't do that. I mean, why don't you start? I reckon let's start so that people know what postmodernism is. All right. And contrast it to so, modernism and pre-modernism and... Back in the day, there was we had no idea what truth was because we were plowing in the fields all day and we didn't have a leisure class to think about it. And then event, when eventually we got a leisure class, a priest or a chieftain or something, and we're talking way back before the birth of Christ here, uh, pretty much everyone came down to the idea that what truth was, what whatever God says. All those prehistoric cultures had some God. It was a stick or a stone or it was lightning in the sky or it was a bushfire or something. Yeah. It was something that they thought created everything and eventually truth got sophisticated in the form of Jesus or Muhammad or some greater like deity or, or prophet of a deity that would give you divine revelation. So people thought what was good was what was written in the Bible. And that gave you a truth of how to act. And there was a comfort in knowing how to act because someone had told you. And if you acted one way, you were doing the good thing and human beings took comfort in that. And many people still do. And then we looked down a telescope and saw that moons went around Jupiter or we looked down a microscope and saw bacteria in a petri dish, and we thought, well, we don't understand that. The Bible doesn't tell us anything about that. Yeah. And there was a period of skepticism in which everyone said, oh, well, why think at all? Because every time you try, and, every time you think you know a truth, it's not, which was kind of postmodernism in itself. And the philosopher Pyros was big. And that all ended when Rene Descartes said, I think, therefore I am. And if you read Rene Descartes and, and work out what I think, therefore I am really means, you realize that there is a universal truth. And like that, that period of skepticism stopped and the enlightenment started. And people thought, this is wonderful. We can use reason um, and and find out all the truths of the world by simply sitting down and thinking about it. And some people th thought all you had to do was sit in a room and think. Yeah. And some people thought, now nah, go out to the side and take measurements, the empiricists. But either way, those two schools of thought went along parallel during the enlightenment yeah. until they culminate in, say, Immanuel Kant, who took reason just so far to the nth degree. He's so smart and so amazing but he couldn't solve the problem, or at least the, the solution that he gave us was really unpalatable. The categorical imperative, there's no way I'm living my life that way. And so the Enlightenment <laughs> came to the end, and we realize reason fails when it goes outside of personal experience. When you just start sitting in a dark room thinking thoughts, you end up in a crazy position. Yep. And the best thinkers that, of time, and maybe that have ever lived, could not answer the, the, the question of what is truth using mm. reason alone. And so now we're in this really shitty postmodernist period where we've killed God. We don't believe in God anymore. Reason failed us. And every bastard running around with a high school education thinks he knows the truth of everything. But every time he has a dialogue, as we're about to, we're going to find out that all our assumptions are wrong and all our reasoning is flawed. And, and we really have no idea of truth anymore. Mm. To the point that we've always said going back in the past that a man is a thing with a Y chromosome and a woman is a thing with two X chromosomes. And we're challenging that now. We're oh, challenging yeah, everything <laughs> all the time to the point of, um, I don't know, what are, what are some of the other big postmodernist theories out there that, uh, all oh, like genders are social constructs. That's the big one. Yeah. And, um, privilege and all that. Any, story. anything that was previously assumed to be a truth can now be challenged because there are no truths. Or, or those are the ones to challenge the hardest. Pretty much. They're the things that were always truths. Mm. Well, the it ones seems, that challenge the hardest. seems those are the ones that they really go against. Uh, the ones that challenge the hardest yeah. are the ones that you've got to benefit in challenging. But it's not that we're, yeah. we're taking everything used to be A, now it's B. It's everything used to be A. There is no B, C, D, E, F, G or any mm. other thing. It's, it's, it just yeah. aren't truths. Which is terrible because I'd like to think that there was a thing called murder. Or there was a thing called rape. And that we could define it and that we could try a person in court and put a bad person away. But... Postmodernism seems to be true, then if we can't define anything, then surely then there are no crimes, and then there is no good, and then there, there is no love or anything, because, well, love can't be defined, or I reject your definition of love, and so it yeah. really just seems like almost like the end of society or the end of civilization or something. Yeah, so, but you can understand this from 
Like if you if you were living five thousand years ago in a cave, um, and then you your wife was pregnant, she wouldn't even be your wife. It would just be this woman you knocked up. Your property or something. And then she dies, and then your child dies, and then you you know. So you can understand that people then didn't they didn't have a lot of agency. They couldn't make a lot of things happen in the world. They just sort of knew to get some food and some water and and they could survive and most things that happened to them they didn't want to happen to them it was they just happened and so the way that people would explain that is it's god's will mm. is a reason it happened and it's you know but if they didn't do that they'd go crazy yeah that's it they had to deal with with the times and then you know that all developed and then you got get modernism where people are now you know they've got the scientific method and they're looking at things and then they, they've got urgent um, agency now where they can say I can find out the truth of this and I can do experiments and and they come up with germ theory and people, mm. you know, suddenly Amazing. people are hygienic and they're saving a lot of lives. And so you start getting, you know, that gets going and, and now, you know, like look nowadays there's iPhones and, and all these amazing, you know, technology, you got to GoPros. hospitals and GoPros and, and it just seems like when you're young, it seems like people can do whatever they want. Like you've got unlimited agency. And I know this is true for me, you know, when I got to uni, I thought I could be anything I wanted to be because human beings are so clever and we're so good. And, and, and slowly you realize that really you don't have that much agency still. There's still a, a lot. You, like you can't just walk your way into a high paying job. And so I think that's really where postmodernism comes from is that it seems to you that people are so clever uh it's disappointing to find out that you, it, yeah it's like a disappointment that you're not actually as well that's a really good thought Craig. powerful in the world as you you initially assumed and then it's a reaction to that i'm thinking of that simpsons episode where uh they have the vigilante group and the young guy that wears the beanie gets disappointed he says i don't believe in anything any, anymore i'm rushing off to be a lawyer or something like that <laughs> and they, they realize that in being in, in letting their vigilante group become criminals, they've disappointed a whole generation of children. And anyway, uh, but yeah, yeah, I think you're probably right on that. That yeah, so that's I'm, that's where the feel, or like at least the fuel for postmodernism comes from. Mm. That university is so bloody impressive, and you think you can be absolutely anything you want. And mm. TV shows superstars, and you think I can be that. They look like me. I can do that. And then what they don't tell you about is the stuff that doesn't sell products, and that is the disappointing <laughs> stuff. Yeah. But the older you get, yeah, bloody hell, I think you're probably right. I mean, it's like, uh, I started getting involved in business when I was maybe like 23 and I was trying to sell these garden irrigation things. And and before I even had ever tried to sell anything, I thought, you know, I'm quite a smart guy and people are quite smart and rational and I'll just be able to tell them the benefits of it and I'll be able to sell these things and I'll just build a business. And then <laughs> the reality is it's kind of, very, it's fucking hard to to sell things and then you kind of get a bit disappointed by it all but you got to stop and think well if this guy's giving me money which means he's foregoing some other product and kind of you know would you rather buy a case of beer or 10 cases of beer with this product and and then I, I could sympathize and go yeah I'd rather have the yeah. beer than buy my own stuff he's so. only <laughs> and so it is it's I think it happens to a lot of people is you kind of think you are more of a boss than you are and then you realize actually <laughs> it's this stuff's not easy and it's so what you needed to do was double down and, and and go back to the drawing board and find another way to sell that irrigation and then mm. you might have eventually come at the truth that alan sugar or donald trump or one of these good businessmen came up with because there is because mm. people do succeed in business yeah. repeatedly so there is um, some yeah. truth out there but if you give up too soon it's yeah. easier to say there is no truth yeah so so you don't want to give up but you also need to be realistic and not get bitter and because you can then blame other people and say well, why yeah. aren't you buying you know there's a it's a conspiracy and there's these people have privilege and it's because i'm working class and said you know so you you need to be careful about that but yeah one of the one of the stats i came across when i was doing all that was that the this average the successful the average successful entrepreneur failed seven times yeah, before seven. their their first success i agree so then you go okay so now Imagine including all the unsuccessful entrepreneurs. How many attempts on average does it take mm. to find a business that actually turns a profit? Because it's easy to sell things. You can sell things at a loss. But 
Yeah, there's no yeah. point in doing that. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Spend a thousand dollars on marketing. I think, I think that's a really make five hundred dollars in sales. I know so. you said that to me before, but I didn't quite get it. No, that's a good idea. I've got a theory on postmodernism. Yeah. I think that it's probably right. Uh, that is to say, postmodernism is probably a fair place to end up in. And I, you, and I'm a product. I'm going to live my whole life in a postmodernist society. Yeah. And I'm just going to have to reconcile myself, or at least a society that has a large quantum of postmodernism in it. Yeah. Um, and I think that the, the, the truth is in the language that we use. If you go up to the Inuit people, it used to be called the Eskimos, they have 20 words for snow. And that's because they build in it, they live in it, they do everything with it. Like they, they're around it all the time. They have to have classifications because some snow is different yeah. powder versus ice to the snowboarders and things like that. Well, that's something I learned. To me, there was just snow and then I went to Whistler. There's and, different and types. Before the snowboarding season, everyone was talking about all the different types. And, powder, and you just yeah. go... Like surely there can't be much of a difference. But then once you're actually on the slope snowboarding, you know, like, okay, this is a good day. So you've created classifications even for something as simple and as basic as snow because it's yeah. useful. See, I think Because it's part of your experience. I've noticed that we only have one word for truth. And that really bothers me. Yeah. Because truth is supposed to be such a huge thing in our lives. But we say if you shoot an arrow at a bow, an arrow like at a target, the, the arrow flies true. true. Yeah. Someone that goes away on a holiday and doesn't cheat on their girlfriend was true. And I swear I will be true to you while I'm away. But then you stand in court and put your hand up and say, I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth. It's one word. There's three different bloody meanings for it. you mm. know. And there seems to be a... There's so much irony in this topic. There seems to be a truth <laughs> in the fact that there are, we, we haven't taken the concept of truth very seriously our whole life because we haven't picked many many words for it if yeah. you want to see a beautiful girl i mean you and i could come up with a hundred different words to describe a female that we think is good looking because that's guys are obsessed with that and that's really important to us and so we create all these different or even like our weightlifters down the gym they're ripped or they're shredded or they're jacked or they're pumped or all these they're buff and they have yeah. different words we have one word for truth and that seems to be a certain sort of social proof to me that we don't take it very seriously that's yeah it's it's kind of like people on. People don't really need the word. They're not interested. No, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's not not as much as snowboarders need different mm -hmm. words for snow. And so if I asked you, what is the numerical value for pi? You would say three point one four. But that's not it. It's, <laughs> it's much longer than that. But if you said three point one four one six whatever it is all the way to the end, I'd say shut up, man. That's not what I asked you. I I'd just say yeah. three point one four. Yeah. And I don't want absolute truth from you. I want practical truth or some useful thing from you and what I'm really yes, I, yeah. I think what the answer is I don't how to I'm, act tell me how to act yes oh, yes yeah. tell, and, in, and in good faith I think the term I don't think that's I think Jean-Paul Sartre might have said this but I might yeah. be wrong on that that what we're really looking for in life is is good faith and if I go to the doctors and I have a flu and it's not a problem at all and it's fine and he gives me a half hour explanation of how the influenza virus started and da 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 and how my immune system works I'd say Shut up, bro. Do I need chicken soup in bed? Thanks, mate. And I'll just yeah. go home and pay the bill. And I'm not looking for truth from him. But I want honesty from people. Unless I don't expect them to be honest, I suppose. is the... yeah. But I can survive in this postmodernist world. And I can accept yeah. that we don't have truth so long as people deal with me in good faith. So to the tra transgender issue, I don't have any real problem with someone that says I identify as something else. Fine. So long as it's being done in good faith and someone's not getting out of national service. Do you see the guy that identifies as an eight-year-old girl? He's like in his 50s. Oh, okay. And you find out eventually about him that he's got repayments to be made to his spouse for, what do they call it in America? Maintenance or uh, alimony? That's what they say. Alimony checks. Yeah, Al yeah and he means just getting out of paying alimony. Yeah, oh, yeah. His lawyer advised him quite well to, to capitalize on this <laughs> moment. He's getting out of a lot of alimony, but he's not acting in good faith. So, yeah. I can I can live happily enough in a postmodernist world where we don't have real strict truth so long as we all come together and realize that to live oh, totally, yeah. to, to pay the bills to keep the power on we've got to accept that electricity flows from positive to negative or whatever however it goes and some postmodernist bastard doesn't try and reason it way out of the power yeah. station working or the economy so, working or relationships working so good faith would be something like not using other people as means to your ends basically yeah kind of hair, like don't use them for your yeah that is a Kantian thing that's his second isn't that his second manifestation of the categorical imperative never treat a person as an end and not a means Ooh, there's a symmetry in this is that, yeah. is that his moral he's got there's three manifestations of his and the, yeah. the second one is never treat a person as a means to your own end 
Yeah, I no listened to that even a podcast the other day, and it was and it brought him up, and I think it was a book about his morals or something. Yeah, yeah, he moral. Yeah, he yeah. Is. I think I might have. That's probably where I picked it up. Is he was talking about the uh, or human dignity, you know, and it's kind of where common law probably comes from. Is like don't use people. He's not English though. But uh, oh, but uh, it's just he's expressing that same sort of that idea of the human. Yeah, the nobility, dignity, of the nobility yeah, the, of the individual, human, yeah. as Peterson would say. Yeah, so, yeah, so I Similar can... to that idea. That there is no truth doesn't freak me out. And there probably isn't any truth. And I'm saying my evidence is that we don't have words for it. Yeah. And the arguments that the postmodernists make. But I can still live in a world like that. And I think that conservatives and classical liberals uh, get too panicky about the idea of postmodernism. So long as you can come back and, and point a finger in a person's face and say, deal with me with honesty. I'm a noble individual. Treat me with dignity. Tell yep. me the best truth that you have and be as honest as you can be. As long I as there's by life, justice actually. and sort of morality, it doesn't really matter what people believe. I don't think, like, I wouldn't worry if somebody What's said to me that the, if the world is flat, they think the world is flat. It's not going to, I'm not going to go out of my way to prove them wrong or anything. Because, you know, it doesn't affect me but as soon as you start trying to pass laws that assume the world is flat and sort of you know affecting my life then that's where I draw the line you just said so yeah. long as there's justice and morality I would say so long as there's the pursuit of justice in good faith and an attempt to bring around morality done rightly and even if mm. we never actually get there so long as we're trying I can live in that and as for the flat world thing if someone said that the world's flat okay well, whatever dude but if someone was teaching my children that the world was flat in school, I would have a big problem with that because I don't think that they're yeah. treating my children as, as noble individuals who need to go on and live a successful life in the world that's clearly round. Like Yeah. No, no. That's a, as, as, so long as it doesn't affect you, you know, it's hard to make sure that it doesn't affect you. And you kind of... But, you know, like you are saying with um, all this postmodernism and and people aren't really interested in truth and you can notice this you, at like dinner parties and social events you know if you if s politics comes up you know and there's you and somebody is opposed to you and it's a bit of an argument comes up a lot of people don't like that mm -hmm. like they really they also tell you to stop talking about it and change the subject and, and they get really uncomfortable because they and of course if you say well why why do you feel like that they'll say well you've got some good points and He's got some good points, and so just and 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 then they really don't want to take a position, you know. So when you say you know, there's only one word for truth, and we're not really interested in it. It's very, very noticeable. Yes, People that's that's the affliction of our time. Yeah. During the Enlightenment, if David Hume and John Stuart Mill started up at a, at a dinner party, everyone would stop and listen because they would expect at the end of it to hear some wonderful piece of reasoning that they could like. I think, therefore, I am, yeah. and run away and live their lives better. Yeah. But um, in, in pre pre enlightenment, if two theologians talked about the meaning of the gospel or something like that, mm -hmm. everyone would stop and listen because they would think that they were hearing the word of God. But in today's day and age, yeah, you're right. People don't listen because all that's going to happen is two ideologues are going to yell at each other, yeah. absolutely disagree, and then there'll be a war or something like that. Yeah, yeah. It's the affliction so, of our so, time. Yeah, it's like nihilism is correct. Yeah, it's, or it's, it's trying to get two nihilists to agree that they're. Uh, that there is a truth or something like that. And everyone knows it's a futile, a futile pursuit that we're yeah. not going to solve this. Yeah, and and but you know, we're not going to solve it in, that, in in any absolute terms. But I think there is, you know, if you if you understand more truth, your life is more enjoyable than if you are deluded. Yeah, definitely pursue you know. truth. Maybe not a so, uh, absolute truth, but pursue so the, it. you know, this this whole thing of people being not taking a position is really strange because. In my mind, there's benefits to being more right than more wrong. Yes, of course. Whereas, whereas for them, they would say that's their that's their big criticism is there's no end to the conversation. And then, so of course, you go well. Why does there need to be an end? Why no. can't you just be happy with forty percent truth? You can just gain ground. Or go from forty-one to forty-two percent truth. Completely agree. Yeah. So, so that, that I think that's a bit of a dangerous uh, place to be in, where you just think, well. Because there is no absolute truth, there is no truth, yep. and and that's the problem that we're having right now. Is there's a lot of people who just are not interested. I agree. Yeah. I can't believe we agreed on so much. Now I thought that was going to be a terrible conversation. <laughs> that that's exhausted my knowledge of postmodernism. I think you have more. 
Oh, not really, I don't think it's just, you could go on forever, really. It's just one of those horrible things that we're living through. Well, okay, so let's say, you know, so people, I think, get a bit trap, trapped in postmodernism. Uh, and, it's, you know, how would you act in today's world? If I could ask you that, like, just a simple believe there that, you've got to believe that there is absolutely nothing simple that is the question <laughs> how would i well, act? how would i it's the same question for everyone how a lot of act? people watching are going to want to know you know say say they're at work and they don't to really live a good enjoy life. But their what job are, life. or they're not enjoying uni so it's kind of like they, they want to know how to act and i think one people have got to realize that it's true there is no absolute truth but some things are more true than others and you've got to take those things seriously otherwise you can't you know, <laughs> yeah, you can't you live through experiences, and you got to create those experiences. You can't, yeah, okay. Yeah. How should I live my life? I can't give an, an, a positive answer to that, but I can say some negative things, like you probably shouldn't smash yourself in the face with a croquet mallet over and over again, or you yeah. shouldn't starve yourself, or you shouldn't uh, treat your wife so bad that she leaves you, or you shouldn't fall in love with someone and then never see them again. Or yeah. you can you can make negative statements, yeah, and that's and all those negative sorts of statements, which I think are all true. Uh, yeah, lead us to live a better life, but mm, yeah, I don't, I don't know how a person should live their life, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, I reckon it's important that you, you believe that there is truth in the world. Otherwise, if you if you come to a place where you believe that things are relative, I mean that's a really bad place to get because how do you get out of there? Yeah, moral relativism. You know where you're just sitting and you're going, well, a conservative thinks these things and those things are kind of true and this person is and a feminist is the same and you just equate them and there's or no you, difference they're, yeah. they're the same things just by a different name and just, and don't argue about things I mean I don't I don't think that's a good place but to you be. have experiences though <clears throat> empiricism like you might hang out with feminists and find out that they're really good fun and have fun all the time and you might hang out with conservatives and find out that you that you're always arguing and then that's how yeah. you work out that you're a feminist well that's it but yeah. So there are some <laughs> truths. Truths of experience. Yeah. Like pleasure. Yeah, but then there's no morality in pleasure. I don't know. This is hard. But that's where I suppose Kant's critique on pure reason is pretty good because I think it. I haven't read it. I looked at the page count and I shat myself. <laughs> <laughs> so it takes but, you about a one page. To, it takes about half an hour to get through one page as well. Yeah. So. But I, I seem to pick up that he's sort of saying because initially. Um, all you see is you just it's like a, co a cacophony or a rhapsody of sensations and then you start creating objective categories like that's the color blue and you put mm -hmm. all your experiences into that so because your experiences are limited by objective reasoning <clears throat> you got to basically use reasoning and then experience it and then you got to incorporate what you experience back into your reasoning and so it's like a you know, an incremental, feedback. yeah. So you've got to try and build up through that you know, that uh, system of feedback, because your experiences will feed back into your reasoning, and your reasoning will feed back into your experiences. Yeah. Because if you change the way you see the world, you act differently, which produces different experiences. And so basically, because <laughs> what I'm trying to get people to realize is that there is truth, and you need to eventual truth mm. after a life lived, a full life lived. Yeah. Having said that, and then of course you understand the world really well, and it uh, that affects your subjective well-being. If you're going to say, so if you if you don't take truth seriously and you just stick down at this level, you're you're, also, you're going to just experience that same subjective uh, feeling, whereas you really could scale up. There's an irony in what you just said because Kant never left the city he grew up in. Do you know that? He never travelled more than 20 kilometres from his birthplace. <laughs> <Really? laughs> yeah, he didn't have any experiences at all. But anyway, I mean, how you would have had to go by horse or something, eh? He used to go walking all the time, they say. But yeah. anyway, yeah, so he, yeah. he lived a very sheltered life. Um, I suppose that leads us to the conclusion that you're saying that there are truths out there. Yeah, I truth, say, truth is a real thing. But we don't have many words for it. There's no, yeah, well... I think, let me put it this way, if you act like there's truth in the world and you don't just, um, you know, leave it as a flat place, you, your life will improve and subjectively, to say, you know, subjective well-being, your life will improve if you act like there's truth in the world. But don't expect to find absolute truth. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, you're just going to, 
And and that's a good thing because it gives you something to do. Yeah, like otherwise, imagine yeah. you just get bored. You just do it. You found it. You go, oh, we found it. And then you go, well, this is boring. Yeah. <laughs> Although Buddha did sit under that tree for a long period of time. He seemed to think he found truth. And he was a fairly happy guy. But uh, yeah. yeah, I think if you, if you get up every morning and act in good faith and act for a proper purpose and try your best to be as honest as you can be, and that's as much as you can hope for. And presumably life has meaning because some people die having lived meaningful lives. Well, that's it. That's it. Life is meaningful. Maybe there's no absolute truth, but life is meaningful. Do what's meaningful, not what's expedient. That's one of the chapters in yeah. J JPB's book. Okay, yeah. Oh, so you read it? No, but I've looked at the comments. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right um, 25 minutes enough for a postmodernist video? Yeah, fuck. Welcome to the quagmire. Welcome to 2018. <laughs> Welcome to post-19, whatever it was. Yeah. All right, guys. We're signing out. Comment, Cheers. like, and uh, subscribe. See ya.